How many of you know someone who has had cancer? Show of hands. It's a terrible disease that touches us all. And I'm going to talk to you today about exciting new technology that has the potential to cure cancer. On the cellular level, cancer is a disease that happens when cell programming goes haywire. And many other diseases are also due to cellular misprogramming. How many of you have installed an app on your phone? Well, that's programming a computer. You're programming a computer in your pocket with how to do something new. And now we've heard about our bodies being described as intricate machines. Could we program this intricate machine in a way analogous to how we program a human-made machine? How would that be possible? Well, this is a question that I've been very interested in for a long time. And let me tell you my story. And so it started when I entered college as an engineering major and a freshman. And soon after I entered, there was a career fair where the alumni come back, and then current students can see all of the great things that you can do in the real world. And I was amazed by all the things engineers could do. And then the alumni come back to then interview students for potential jobs or internships. And I felt so lucky to be able to have an internship, even as a freshman, um, in one of these great fields. And so I was interviewed by someone who represented a nice Dow Jones company, nice company man, nice tie. And he interviewed me to find out what I knew about engineering. And everything went well with the interview. And then at the end, he wanted to know if I had any questions for him. And I did have a question. I wanted to know what he was most excited about. I wanted to know how after, with a year's tuition at a private engineering school, $50,000 a year, after four years, $200,000 plus, endless nights of long problem sets and really hard homework and hard exams and all of that, with what he's doing now, what he's most excited about. And he told me about toothpaste. Toothpaste, okay, well, let's see where this goes. Maybe it'll be a good story. And so how it worked at his company is that the business executives told the engineers they needed to make a new toothpaste that then customers would feel a better sensation of clean and would want to buy more toothpaste. And it turns out by doing focus groups, how a lot of people know that their mouth feels clean after brushing their teeth is they slide their tongue over their teeth, and if it glides smoothly, you could try, <laughs> then they feel their mouth is pretty clean. And so they needed to engineer a toothpaste to do that better. So the engineers worked on it, and they found out the toothpaste they had actually cleans the teeth really well. They couldn't make it any more clean. But what they could do is add a slippery chemical to the toothpaste. So then when people brush their teeth, this chemical gets deposited on the teeth, and then the tongue can slip even easier over the teeth. So this is what they did. The customers liked it. They bought more toothpaste. It raised the bottom line of the company. They, they made money. But hearing this, it was really ridiculous. I mean, here it was, this toothpaste didn't make the teeth more clean. It made them less clean. It deposited this goop on them. And so it really took me aback. And I decided right then and there, this was exactly not what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to help people. I wanted to work in an industry that was focused on something that people really needed, not an industry that was focusing on selling and, and trying to market different perceptions. I wanted to stay, stay up late at night working on problems I felt were going to heal the world and make a difference, not just make money. And besides, it's like the late artist, Notorious B.I.G., would say about money. <laughs> mo money, mo problems. <laughs> and so, as an engineer, I went into biomedical engineering. And I wanted to learn how to heal the world through engineering. And I learned how, like electrical engineers, engineer computers. Biomedical engineers engineer the human body and human health. And I was learning in my engineering classes about how to program computers. And that's where I first got interested in, could we program the body in an analogous way? And so the human body is made up of trillions of cells. Each of those cells is like a mini computer, a mini cell phone, a mini decision machine. That cell probes a world around it and gets inputs, just like we do in our external world. The cell can feel mechanical forces, feel temperatures, taste molecules. It has all these uh, sensations that it has as inputs. It then processes those inputs to make decisions as outputs, just like how a computer takes in inputs, 
follows its programming and its algorithms and then chooses an output. In the case of a cell, an output could be to move somewhere new, to grow, to divide in two, to specialize, or even to self-destruct. All of our cells actually have programs in them to self-destruct. If they start doing something they shouldn't be doing, they're supposed to basically commit cell suicide for the good of the organism instead of going haywire. But in cancer, what happens is that the cells ignore that and they just grow uncontrollably instead. And so the programs and the processing of those decisions are really important to health and disease. And so I wanted to know how to affect this in, in a way that could help human health. And so scientists have found that the programming inside cells is on a molecule called DNA. And DNA is very good at making copies of itself over and over and over again. Very good, but not perfect. And so the idea is if you could introduce new DNA into cells, you could give them new code, new programming to let them heal. And so if you can deliver DNA or a similar molecule called RNA, both of these molecules work. They're both nucleic acids. That's the NA in their name. If you deliver these nucleic acids to cells, you can just simply put them in, and then the cells will follow new programs. It's not exactly that simple. It's actually really hard. So the nucleic acids do have the information, but to gain it safely and effectively into the cell is really tricky. It's kind of like hacking the cell, and hacking the cell is like hacking into someone's password. It's really difficult to do, and there's safeguards in place to stop it. That being said, nature has evolved ways to do this, and so viruses have evolved for billions of years to get very good at delivering nucleic acids, these genetic programming, into cells. Viruses are tiny particles, the original nanoparticles, and they can trick a cell into entering the cell, get inside, and then deliver their nucleic acid cargo inside the cell to have their program read. And they can hijack the cell and the cell machinery so the cell's not doing what it's supposed to be doing, it's just making more and more copies of the virus. To a virus, the only idea worth spreading is a message that says, spread this message. And so that's what happens to the cell. It makes more and more copies of the virus. Often it kills the cell, and these viral particles spread to neighboring cells, and continuing this infection. So in my lab at Johns Hopkins, I'm really interested in ways that we can make a synthetic virus. So it's not a virus, it's a biodegradable particle. But like a virus, it can deliver these nucleic acid instructions into cells. But it can do it very safely and effectively. It can deliver the code and then get out of the way and degrade and not cause any problems and mayhem within the cell. And so gene-delivery nanoparticles are part of an emerging class of medicine called nanomedicine. Medicines delivered in tiny packages on the nanometer scale. And these gene delivery nanoparticles are about one one thousandth the thickness of a human hair. Teeny tiny. Have any of you, of you ever cut yourself really bad and needed stitches, but then those stitches didn't need to be taken out afterward? This happened to me as a kid. I hurt my knee really bad. I actually needed stitches three layers thick, deep, and I still have the scar. And I was curious why the doctor didn't need to take out those inner layers of stitches. Like, how could that work? And it turned out they were, the sutures were made out of biodegradable plastic. And it was like the moment when, in the movie The Graduate, a young Dustin Hoffman, who just graduates and is looking out into his future, is told for career advice and, and what's coming up in the world, just to know one word, world, word, one word about the future, plastic. Except the version 2.0 for today's age is two words, biodegradable plastic. <laughs> biodegradable plastic is very exciting. Biomedical engineers are using biodegradable plastic to invent the future of medicine. Because when we make our particles, biodegradable plastic plus DNA equals genetic nanomedicine. And in our lab at Hopkins, we're designing new types of biodegradable plastic and other biomaterials to create these nanoparticles to safely and effectively d deliver genes to program a range of cells from the inside out. And so what this enables is we can deliver all different kinds of nucleic acids, DNA and RNA of different types, to different types of cells and tissues to then treat different diseases. And so this approach, you can go after the more common genetic diseases, things like cystic fibrosis, hemophilia, severe combined immunodeficiency. But also you can use this approach to treat even more complicated diseases, cardiovascular disease, cancer, 
diabetes, neurological diseases, treating all of these diseases at a fundamental genetic level. You can even hit targets that are seen by the pharmaceutical industry as undruggable targets by using this gene therapy approach. And then, more, moreover, as there's gains with genomics, and then we understand more and more personalized genomes, we'll be able to look at an individual and understand the precise molecular genetic basis of disease, and then be able to treat it using gene delivery on the genetic level. This can revolutionize medicine by opening up personalized medicine. And this kind of approach, you could then have cancer cells have the message to specifically self-destruct in a way where they die, but they don't hurt any surrounding healthy cells, unlike conventional chemotherapy. And then you can also program tissues to heal, stem cells to differentiate, and all other new, uh, new areas of medicine. Now, when we want to communicate, we could do it as a written message, like this genetic code, but there's other ways we communicate as well. So if you want to teach a child something new, for example, you could write down directions for them on a piece of paper and give it to them. Maybe that works for some children, for others, not so much. I have three children myself, and I've learned that even a seemingly simple word, such as no, can be astonishingly difficult to understand. <laughs> so when we communicate, it's not just by writing things down, we also talk and perform, and like a TED Talk, communicate information other ways. And so this works with cells, too. So instead of making biodegradable particles really small to mimic viruses, we can make them a bit bigger to mimic cells, to create synthetic cells out of the same biodegradable plastic that was in my stitches. And then the cells can learn from these particles through contacts like they have just with cell-to-cell -cell contact, and that's how you can communicate information to cells from the outside in. And so we can create these biodegradable particles, and we don't need to make a full synthetic cell. It's really just like a mannequin. The outside needs to be like the cell, and the inside can just be the plastic. And so for a cell, when it looks at the world, it doesn't really look. It can't see, it can't hear, but it can touch and it can taste. So if we put the right biomolecules on the surface, then a cell can taste the right thing, and then that particle can program it with what to do. And in our lab at Johns Hopkins, we're really interested in the design of artificial immune cells. So we can create our biodegradable particles, we can have them in different sizes and shapes to mimic the biological cell, and then we put on its surface specific proteins that can then help teach the real immune cells what to do. And so one important signal we put on there, one particular protein, communicates a pattern or an antigen. It's a specific target for the immune cell to learn how to recognize. This is like a wanted poster that'll tell that immune cell what to look for. And then we put a second molecule on the surface that's like the marching orders that'll tell that immune cell what to do with the target. In the case of cancer, it's search and destroy. And then those immune cells can divide, divide, and divide. They raise a whole army to go through the body looking for those cancer cells wherever they are and specifically attack them without harming normal cells. And this is really exciting because just like you can't get the same cold twice because your body becomes immune to it, you can't, for a cancer patient that then had their immune system fight the cancer, they can never get that cancer again. Because if it were ever recur and come back, the immune system is already revved up and trained that it has the wanted poster, it has the marching orders, it has seek and destroy, and it'll go kill that new cancer before you even know that it's there. No further treatment necessary. So this can revolutionize treatments for cancer patients and their families. And the same type of approach of engineering cells from the outside in can be used to revolutionize uh, transplants and new ways to combat infectious diseases. So it's been really exciting to share with you how we can program cells in the lab, and we're doing it now in animals. And as we continue to forge the future with these new biotechnologies, one day we'll be able to program cells in human bodies. We'll be able to program ourselves to heal. And these breakthroughs can lead to a future where cancer can be cured, tissues can regenerate, and we live in an era of truly personalized medicine. And to all of you out there looking to make your mark in the world, I urge you, don't settle for slippery coatings or changing perceptions of reality. Go out there, follow your passion, and change reality itself. Thank you.